behind you. Oh, perfect. Well, you want to, because it's eight mil. All right, so I'm filming myself. It has both subject detect and face detect. So subject detect, and then you can go either vertical or horizontal. So I think that's better for my, more like tunnely, like going through a tunnel all the time. When you got that filter for GoPro, you know, what was that filter? Ultra frame looks. Oh, woman here, then. Yeah. All right, we will stop the video now. Click, click, click. Love one, and welcome to Chantown, Vancouver. We are here at Maxim's Bakery and Restaurant. It's this little hidden secret spot. It's my second office upstairs of the bakery. I've given away my circuit, but here we are looking at the brand new Fujifilm XS20, and on Chris's XH2S. We have the new 8mm lens. Now, neither of these are, they're both pre-production, and the reason why I have these cameras, as I mentioned in my other video, go check that video out, is that I was commissioned to do some of the lifestyle photos. And so, I know in Canada, they said they were not gonna give these things out to any reviewers, and I'm a reviewer. So, any of you reviewers out there wondering, why, why does Big Head Taco, why does Take have one of these? It's because I did the lifestyle photos, but I was given very strict instructions where I'm not actually testing this camera or testing th this lens here. But uh, I just went out and about in uh, Chinatown with Chris and he was filming me with the 8 mil and I was vlogging and vlogging with the open gate, meaning it reads off the entire uh, sensor, 6.2K, much like the X-H2S. And again, only from what I can see, it looks like open gate, maximum uh, 30 frames, 29.97 frames per second. So 30 frames per second and 6.2K. I think that's one of the big reasons why you would want to get the XS20. If you have an XS10 and you don't shoot any video, I don't see a reason to upgrade other than maybe the using the new MPW 235 battery, which they're able to squeeze inside, which is fantastic. Uh, one of the biggest issues of the XS10, if you were shooting video, was people saying like the batteries don't last very long. So having the MPW 235 battery is fantastic. Having open gate is fantastic. Both great for video shooters, but if you're a still shooter, even with my X-Pro3, yeah, the MPW 126S battery is okay, but I can live with pocketing two of them. It's not a big deal. But if you are a video person, then the XS20 is like a huge, leap from the XS10 or any of the, the fourth generation products to this other than getting the XH2S. I mean, that is a pro-centric. It has the CF Express card. It has full-size HDMI in. It has all the, the I.O. that you'd want. This does actually have headphone, uh, it has headphone in, built in here. So even comparing it to the X-T4 or the X-T5, which you can using a USB-C to 3.5 mil adapter, you can monitor headphone, but this is like right here and it's on the opposite side. I, I'm pointing to the, to the microphone input. The microphone input is just above the screen, which is kind of what you want when you're vlogging, so it's out of the way. But the microphone, uh, headphone in is on the other side. I don't mind, uh, check out my video on the XS10. I don't mind the way the dials work. It's intuitive for me, but it might not be for some people. I still prefer the classic dials on the Fujifilm, but having uh, this layout for many is kind of what they're looking for. So for if you're a content creator, open gate video, shooting vertical as well as horizontal video, being able to monitor headphone in without having to use an adapter, having a microphone input above the screen, having a full articulating screen for selfie mode as well if you just want to keep this closed and protected. EVF is still a prosumer EVF. Uh, even though the battery's been upgraded, the memory card is still in the bottom, not on the side. So typically on a pro-ish camera, you want dual card slots. I'm gonna now invite Chris over here and, and kind of give his inputs of what he thinks of this brand new X. Well, you need a, you need a microphone, don't yeah, you? you gotta get, you gotta get me a mic. All right. Also, I'm also drinking a milk tea. You gotta, I'm a pretty big guy, you gotta move over. All right, so Chris, XS20, open gate, new battery, articulating screen, go for it. I mean, it's basically the baby X-H2S. As far as an everyday content creation camera, this this is a great companion to the, to the S. The grip is just 
you, you're looking at this tiny, tiny camera, but when you when you actually hold it, it feel, dare I say it, it feels like a like a Canon uh, Canon R series camera. Don't say it. It doesn't look like it, or shoot like it. It shoots like a Fuji, but it feels like it, it's got a real grip here. Like this is a shooter's grip. Yeah. And, and right now I have the 1814, so I call this like the poor man's like a Q. It does, I didn't mention this, but it does use the previous 26 megapixel X-Trans backside illuminated CMOS sensor, which is a fantastic sensor. Obviously it's not as fast as the stack sensor in the X-H2S, yeah, but yeah. that's a $500 premium over even the regular X-H2s. If they put a stacked in here, this would be close to the price of an X-T5. And I yeah, think a lot of people yeah. would be like, I'd rather just get the X-T5. If you're kind of on the border of, I shoot more stills and video, but if you do a little bit of everything, I think having this sensor is better because you don't want 40 megapixels in a camera this small. And that previous X-T4 sensor, the, the rolling shutter is really good. It's not as good as the S, but it's still really good. So doing video on stuff like this is actually ideal having this sensor over a 40 megapixel. Yeah, and for everyday content creators, you know, your Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, daily vloggers, this this has everything that you need. One of my favorite things about it actually is also the upgraded battery. Like that was huge. They didn't yeah. have to do that. Yeah. You know, that's very Fujifilm to, to give you that that extra battery. It, it even has the, the fan screws. Like you can screw the, the Fujifilm fan onto here. And I think that's the big difference between the S and this one, the X-H2S, yeah. is that because the body is so much bigger, they have bigger heat sinks. And even then they gave the fan. Some people yeah. laugh saying you don't need it. Yeah. But if you're doing extreme shooting, all day shooting, the fan will come in and handy for this camera if you are like someone like you who wants it as a B cam you need to buy the fan you yeah. don't need it because yeah. you don't want this shutting down on a really important shoot yeah but that's a that's a but that's about it and that's making this camera a professional camera at that point you could do most of everything with this without the fan but again yeah if you're right if you're gonna use this is a B cam to your X-H2S, you're probably gonna need that. As long as you wanna shoot in the 6.2K open gate. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing TikTok videos and they're like 30 second, one minute shots of six, like bursts, one minute bursts of 6.2K, you'll probably get away with it. You won't overheat yeah. the thing. But if you're shooting like sustained, you're doing an interview and you don't wanna buy two X-H2Ss, you wanna buy this as your B cam, then you're probably gonna need the fan. On that, on that note, I, I don't think I would want two X-H2S's when this exists yeah. because this is a way lighter weight kit. This is super small and, and very capable. So you, you still get all the Fuji sauce. You get Nostalgic Neg in here, right? Yeah. Yeah, you get, yeah, you get, you all, get, the all, new, the get all the new film sims, yeah. Uh, you get you get the open gate and you get this tiny body and it's and it's also got IBIS in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it has the latest IBIS. It also has a, a new feature where the subject detect and face detect, there's an auto mode where it will know if it's a dog or cat or a car or a human yeah and i hope that they will roll that back to the other cameras but for now this is the only camera that does it in auto but mostly for stills at least for me is that it will know a person from an animal from a car and it will start to use the ai algorithm which is which is fantastic but that's a, a new thing with this camera that even the xh2s currently does not have. Again, this is pre-production. I'm not technically supposed to have this. This is technically not a review, it's just a discussion. There may be other things buried in here that will blow our minds. But for now, even the way it is now, for me, everything's been improved on this. It has the latest processor, has open gate video, which I wouldn't use that often, but having it is, is a great backup. I don't think I would use it that often either, but there are just times where you're gonna need to repurpose some footage and certain shots that you just you're not going to shoot everything in that open gate, but it, it's nice to have it. And one of the things that I love they transferred over here is you still have all of the custom modes. Yeah. So, I mean, you have way more. I think you have seven yes. custom nodes on the X-H2S. Here you have four. four. And then also you can, it could be either video or stills. I, I checked that. And that seems like a pretty nothing feature, but actually, apparently, there's a company called Canon who thinks that's a pro feature that should only be on their top of the line pro cameras. I had an R6 and you couldn't save any custom video modes. Cripple hammer. Yeah. And let's just quickly, as our soup and food gets cold, and my Hong Kong some milk tea, that this lens, the 8mm lens, look at this. We're, this is actually kind of a, a tiny um, space here. Yeah. It like makes it look big. As I go to the edge, you could probably start telling 
how you know it starts to distort as you get to the edge. But this is really wide. We're only about an Two arm's feet? length yeah. from the camera, but it makes it look like it's further back. But this is great for if you are a YouTuber and you're in like Thailand in some hole in the wall restaurant and you want to bring attention to yourself while you're doing food vlogging. This is a perfect lens. It's a well-corrected longitude kind of center, but this is a great video lens as well as an architectural lens. It's hard to shoot for street. I've, I'll put in some samples, but really I think for video, close video work, not vlogging, it's a, it's a fantastic it, lens. It really feels like if you have a newer generation iPhone and you have that 0.5 uh, lens, Only like the, the ultra wide, yes, it yes. feels like that. Yeah. Um, and Except really good quality and well yeah it's insane quality and the great part about it is even for people who are shy vloggers ha actually being able to hold the camera right up to your face it just there's something that's a lot less intimidating about yes. having it way out here that's why I always like my 10 to 24. 10 to 24 and and shoot at 10 when I'm in a restaurant but it's like I just want to be close but you can also kind of get away with on that shooting a little bit lower about this this mm. distance yeah and you're kind of just talking to it it kind of looks like you're checking it out you like it low don't you <laughs> I don't know sometimes it just feels like I don't know. to have two up high. Yeah, I don't know. It just depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I like to talk from here because it just creates a different perspective. I like to talk down to the to the YouTubes. It, there's just something so nice and light about this. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, just yeah. it's just less intimidating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as as we were talking about before, I think with the eight mil, it goes beyond the wide that you're usually used to. Like normally we're gonna get a kind of a 16 yeah, equivalent 16, but being 14. being 12 mil it's it's insane it's insane yeah and it's, and, it's, and, like and a, it's like a gopro like an action cam yeah and i don't think the 3.5 hurts it the stabilization on this lens too there's no in body stable or there's no in lens stabilization yeah, no ois but because it's so wide when you're walking it yes. it really does look like it's gliding and, and you can correct because it's so wide if you want you can software correct correct the wobble mm -hmm. if you don't have uh, ibis all right yeah. hey we, we got we, we got to yeah, get going gotta but, but anyways yeah. uh th thanks for joining me chris what did you break my th oh thanks for joining me chris thanks for and me. then uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll do more stuff together yeah, yeah. we got to eat now all right let's see what it looks like all right here we go and look at that Maybe we'll be on the other side so the lighting is a little bit better. Ah, 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 there you go. Alrighty.